Hello, my name is Catherine Quinn and I'm the Head of School for Science, IT and Media. I wish I could tell you that I wanted to be a scientist from an early age, but quite honestly I didn't. Uh, I think a part of that was that I didn't see myself in science. I think when, when most people imagine what a scientist is, they picture your classic icons such as Einstein or Darwin, typically your kind of white, middle-aged, middle-class men. And when I was a young girl, I just didn't, didn't see myself in that role. So quite honestly, I think my love, my love for science grew when I went to secondary school, which I think most people would agree is quite a tumultuous time for most. You're struggling with your identity and who you are. And I took a lot of comfort in the world of science fiction. So I would disappear into the world of science fiction and I think I took a lot of comfort in the idea that it was easier for me to be an alien from Krypton than it was for me to accept that maybe I was just a bit of an oddball from Watford. So science fiction, comic books, that became my love and what I found then was that at the root of all of these stories was, was science at the core. So understanding the physics behind the TARDIS and the Doctor Who's control of the space-time continuum, or understanding how mutations occurred when Bruce Banner had an experimental accident. Science was at the root of all of those stories. So I fell in love with it and I pursued it and I actually found that as I went higher up through science and I went through my degree in biomedical science and my masters in molecular biology, I found that actually the real villains, I suppose, in the world that we face are things like cancer, cystic fibrosis, Huntington's, Parkinson's. These were the real horrors that we were having to face and science, for me, was the hero in that story. It was the answer for the development of certain medicines that can cure us, for biomedical equipment to help us survive in a really quite horrific and scary world. I think that can be quite uh, a daunting thought for, for most females in science, engineering or maths. I think there is a, a real lack of leadership and management represented by females. I think for myself it was um, a decision that I really struggled with. So although I knew I was driven and I was passionate and I wanted to progress, there was this fear that I didn't quite fit the managerial role. And a typical scientist, I would do my research, I'd read papers, I'd attend webinars on what would make a successful manager and honestly I didn't really identify with some of those characteristics. For me, they seemed very much authoritative, domineering type characteristics which just didn't fit me. And I will never forget when I took over a role as a section manager, one of the criticisms I had in one of my early meetings was, Catherine, you're being too sensitive. And I remember being mortified in that meeting and I felt embarrassed and I felt insecure and I doubted my ability to, to manage and to lead. And then I went away and I carried on and I worked hard and I actually found later on that that criticism of being sensitive or that neg negative connotation towards being sensitive was actually my greatest skill and was what made me the greatest manager was that I could be sensitive and I could empathise with my staff members and I could be compassionate and empathise with them. So I suppose my message is to those women who are currently in science or in engineering and maths, to not be afraid to go for those leadership roles, go for those promotions, because your feminine qualities, the ones that we often are criticised for or feel insecure about, are the ones that make you a fantastic leader. My message to you, future scientists, is to not be afraid if you don't quite fit the mould. 
If you're not that classic grey-haired crazy scientist, that's okay because the beauty about science is that it's for everyone. Everyone can do science. We are science. Living, breathing, physiologically, anatomically, we're all science.